Neural networks. The words you use to make something sound cooler than it actually is. Now we already worked with neural networks in the Flappy Bird video before, but we use the genetic algorithm to train them. And today we're using something different which is supervised learning. Now without further ado, let's go. Now I'm just a beginner when it comes to neural networks, however, I'm an expert when it comes to drawing stuff on the screen. So we're gonna start with that. Here's our empty window. Our goal is to draw this thing. It's called a multilayer perceptron and is one of the basic forms of neural networks. It has three types of layers. We have an input layer, hidden layers, and an output layer. Each layer contains a bunch of neurons, and each neuron is connected to all the neurons in the next layer. Now the connections have certain weights, and by changing those weights we can train the network. Before we go any further, let's first draw this thing. We'll start with with a single neuron. Okay, that was easy. Now we need to draw other neurons. Here's our screen. Let's say our neural network has three layers. Let's also say that the input layer has two, the hidden layer has three, and the output layer has one neuron. We need to find a general formula for drawing neurons based on these values. If we divide the width of the screen by the total number of layers plus one, we can find the horizontal distance between them. Then we can use a similar formula to find the vertical difference between neurons. Then we can use these values to find the coordinates of the neurons. To keep things organized, I put the network drawing code in a separate function. Okay, it's working. As you can see, I'm also showing the value of each neuron on the console. I want to see these numbers on those white circles. Let's do it. For that, we're going to use the slightly modified draw text function. Let's test it. Well, would you look at that. The reason we're seeing so many digits is because when the two-string function converts floating numbers, it sets the precision to six digits by default. The fixes will first round the values to the nearest hundreds. Then we'll use strings to change the precision. Alright, that looks better. Now we need to add the most crucial part of neural networks, which is weights. We're gonna use a 3D vector to store the weights. Aren't you gonna say anything? No. But I'll make sure you suffer. Okay, now before we draw the weights on the screen, I want to quickly print them on the console. Alright, now let's draw them on the screen. Since this FML doesn't support line thicknesses, we're gonna use vertex arrays instead. We now have a beautiful neural network on our screen, but it's not over yet. Now I want to change the color of the neurons based on their value. First we find the neuron with the highest value, then with the lowest one. Then we'll draw the neuron with the highest value as white, the lowest as black, and everything in between as different shades of gray. Since the standard functions only support one dimensional vectors, I made my own functions. And check this out, I'm using recursion. Ok, let's also change the color of the values depending on the neurons color. Here we go. I also added an outline for the neurons. Now we can work on the weights. To color the weights, we're gonna find the lowest and the highest weights first. But unlike with the neurons, we're gonna find those weights for each layer. The weights will be displayed in green if their value is positive and in red if they're negative. We'll also make them more transparent the closer they're to zero. Here's how it looks in the code. Ok, we finished with the visualization. Now here comes the hard part. Our goal is to make a neural network that will take two bits as an input and apply the exclusive OR operator to them. We'll start with the forward propagation. First we'll put all the inputs into the input layer. It is recommended that the value should be between 0 and 1 or negative 1 and 1, but nothing stops you from using larger numbers. As you can see all the neurons in the input layer are connected to the neurons in the next layer. Like I said before, each of these connections has its own weight. And in order to calculate the value of the next neuron, we need to get the values of all the neurons in the previous layer and multiply them by the weights of the corresponding connections that are connected to this neuron. Neuron. After doing that, we'll take their sum and that sum will be the value of the neuron in the next layer. We repeat this process for other neurons until we reach the output layer. Alright, after writing a bunch of loads, we're ready to test it. As you may have noticed, some of the values are getting out of range. To prevent this, we're gonna use the activation functions. Activation functions take a number as an input and return a different number as an output. Isn't that what every function does? Look, I'm not good with explanations, okay? Since we only want values between 0 and 1, we'll use an activation function that will shrink any number in that range. Most people would use a sigmoid function for this case. But since I'm a crazy idiot who likes to do everything by himself, I'm gonna use my own function. Here's the formula. Alright, it's time we train this thing. And for that, we're gonna use backpropagation. What the hell? Ok, here's how it works. We're gonna start from the output layer and go through all the neurons until we reach the input layer. That's why it's called the backpropagation. Let's say our inputs are 0 and 1, so the output must be 1. But after the forward propagation, the neural network gave us this answer. Obviously this is wrong, so we need to train the network. First we need to find the errors of all the neurons. We can find the error of the output neuron by subtracting the desired output from its value. Then we can multiply that error by the weights to get the errors of the previous neurons. Ok, here comes the training part. Let's imagine some graph. 
This is just a random graph, don't take it too seriously. On the x-axis, we have all the values of a single weight. On the y-axis, we have the errors this value is produced. At the start, we assign random weights to the connections. Then we need to change the weights to minimize the error. So we need to get to the lowest points in our graph. And we can do that by using this formula. The learning rate is how big this step is gonna be. Obviously, if we set a large value, we can simply skip the value with minimal error. So we need to take super small steps. Also, this formula has a derivative. The derivative is the slope of the function at any given point. Here's a derivative of our function. Now this algorithm is not perfect, because it chose this point as a solution, even though there are better solutions to this problem. There are many ways to prevent this, but we're not gonna focus on them in this video. Alright, writing the code was easier than I thought. At the start, the neural network performs terribly, but after a gazillion propagations, it's showing amazing results. Ideally, this thing should be zero, but that's very unlikely, because nothing is perfect. But the training is working, so now we can start... I want to visualize all the outputs of the neural network. We're gonna give the coordinates of the pixel as inputs and the output of the network will be the color of that pixel. Are you ready for this? Oh yeah. Let's add custom inputs with the mouse. Okay, let's see how the neural network will solve this problem. Okay, that's good. Now watch what happens if we try it the other way. And it's not working anymore. That's because the neural network simply rotates the dividing line around the origin. And the origin coordinates are a pair of zeros, so we can't move it with just weights alone. Now we could solve this problem by adding hidden layers. Or we could add bias neurons. Bias neurons are pretty much similar to regular ones, except their value is always one. They help the neural network shift to some by a certain value. Okay, adding the bias neurons was a lot harder than I thought. And was it worth it? Hell yeah! Let's try something more difficult. This is so cool. Let's try adding the third color. We have two inputs, one bias, and three outputs that represent red, green, and blue. Let's try this simple problem. Very good. But can it work with curves? Yes, it can. Let's try three circles. It took some time, but it did its job. I wonder what happens if we confuse it. As you can see, it defines it as a gray area. Of course, there are some problems which this network cannot solve, but I think we did a good job here. Now, I may have made some mistakes since I'm just a beginner, but it works, so I don't care. Big thanks to Ziffery, hope I'm pronouncing that right, for becoming my first patron and financially supporting this channel. I love you. Alright, don't forget to subscribe, like, and make sure you don't...